Yeah, we back. We back. Now, today we got an interesting topic. An interesting topic that you never really hear brought up, to be honest with you, right? So today, we're going to get into it. Now, ever since the whole Israel-Palestine thing popped off, I would say the majority of the black community is in support of Palestine, right? But you do have a faction within the black community that's kind of like, eh, I ain't really rocking with them Arabs. You had individuals like Dr. Umar Johnson who came out and made a statement. And even on both sides, you had folks like Amari Stoudemire, Floyd Mayweather, who actually, Floyd Mayweather sent a whole private jet to the, to the Israeli military, sent a whole care package. Still to this day, I can't believe he did that. But anyway, today I want to attack a topic. I was sitting back last night, just relaxing, right, on my Sunday evening. And as always, I was in deep introspection. As always, I was in a state of deep reflection. And I was thinking like, because the way the narrative is framed for this conflict, they say this is a battle against white supremacy, right? So I was I was sitting back thinking like, okay, so if we weigh it up on a scale, if we put your offenses side by side and we judge which is more reprehensible, if we conduct a moral assessment to identify the party with the greater guilt, I was just sitting back thinking, who would come out on top? The Arab or the European? So today, we're going to get into it. And this topic is an open discussion, meaning that you are free to come into the comment section, rebuke me, rebut me, and give me the other side of the story if you feel like you disagree with me, right? So I'm just laying down my position. That's all, man. That's all. Now, I'm going to give you about six reasons why I believe the Arab got more blood on his hands than the European. And I'm coming with a knockout punch off the rip. Like after this, like you can't even, you can't even come back from this knockout punch and I'm coming in first round. There has never been an, an abolitionist in the history of the Arab world mic drop bro the game is already over the game is already over and we just beginning if you calculate starting from the beginning of the arab slave trade you know approximately right they say it started in the seventh century so let's say it started in the beginning of the seventh century right at the beginning up until right now 2023 so that'll be about 1423 years and it's still ongoing in many parts of the arab world so in all that in all that time all, damn near 1500 years they haven't popped out they haven't produced not a single abolitionist bro Listen, it's, it's all, the game is already over. The game is already over. But let's continue. And now, if we simply calculate the time frame of the Arab slave trade compared to the European slave trade, I think around both I think both of them reached their peak around the 18th and 19th century. But like I said, the Arab slave trade got its roots back in the, in the 7th century. So now we're going on 1400 years, right? The transatlantic slave trade with the Europeans, if we calculate that, the Portuguese, they're the ones that are credited with popping it off. The Portuguese are the first, the, the real slave traders, right? The original slave traders. That was in the 15th century. But by the 19th century, bro, it was out the door, bro. It was out the door. It was out the door. It was too much. It was too much revolution popping off. It was too much rebellion popping off. Man, black men was going too crazy. And also due to the fact that industrialization was on the way, it was a variety of factors. But the same cannot be said for the Arab world. The same cannot be said for the Arab world. And damn near 1500 years, they ain't produced a single abolitionist. God damn. Off the top of your head, can you name a single Arab abolitionist? Name a single, just name one off the top of your head, bro. Off the top of my head, I can name Thomas Clarkson, William Wilberforce, John Brown, William Lloyd Garrison, Anthony Bezanet. Now, listen, I could be wrong. That's why I said it's an open topic. It's an open discussion. So maybe in the past, back in the 11th century, there was an Arab abolitionist back in the day I didn't know about. Just let me know, bro. I'm open. I'm open to being wrong. Like I said, I'm just laying down my argument. We in the courtroom. I'm just laying down my argument. That's all. That's all it is, man. Like I said, we are just simply comparing the so-called white supremacists and the so-called Arab supremacists. That's all we doing, man. That's all we doing, man. Now, my next reason I would lay down is as those of us in the West, right? Those of us in the West, we always talk about, you know, discrimination and things like that and all and all this shit, right? But do you know that the black folks in the Arab world, even in certain countries in Africa, right? They're still going through they're still going through their civil rights movement. Like in 2023, they're still fighting for their rights, like their basic rights in 2023. You got locations like Mauritania, who only abolished slavery in 1981, by the way. The social landscape that our people are forced to navigate in the Arab world in many locations, it's as if they are still a century behind or two centuries behind. And everybody simply accepts it because, well, it's just it's just the culture. It's just the tradition. It's just the it's just the customs. And like I said before, I never understood how especially black folks in particular, you know, we go on and on and on and on about the white man, the white man, the white man. But then you let the Arab man sneak out the back door so effortlessly, man. Like how we let the Arab sneak out the back door. And the reason why the Arab is so shameless in his primitive and, and archaic behavior is because we never really confront that topic. We never, we never really confront that topic. We never confront that topic for whatever reason. I can't tell you why, but we never confront that topic with the same passion that we go after the white man, the white man, the white man. Now let's continue. 
Now, a lot of folks say that it was the European, it was the white supremacists that came with the concept of race. Yes, the European utilized the concept of race, but it was actually the Arab who, like I said, way, way back when his slave trade began, he associated a group of people, a race of people with a caste in the society, right? With slavery, with the bottom caste. It was with the Arab slave trade that that came about. The white man wasn't really on the scene back in the seventh century, the eighth century, the ninth century. He wasn't really, he wasn't really making moves like that. He didn't really come to power until recently. So we gotta remember, you can't get so caught up in the white man, the white man, the white man, that you allow the Arab to sneak out the back door and then try to sneak back through the front door talking about, hey brother, hey brother, nah, nah brother, nah brother. Let's continue. I touched on this topic in a previous video. I had asked a question, but I didn't give an answer. I had asked the question, when you look at the, the transatlantic slave trade, you could see the millions and millions of descendants, the physical evidence that's walking around on two legs. But when you look at the Arab slave trade, like I said, that lasted for longer, that stretched a, a, a farther geographical location, right? Because the transatlantic slave trade was about, you know, the coast of Africa and then we go into to the European colonies, right? But when it came to the Arab slave trade, it stretched to the Middle East, to certain parts of Europe and even Asia. So it went across multiple continents. It went on way longer and it trafficked way more people. So how the hell it's not a massive a diaspora population in the Arab world, similar how there's a massive diaspora population due to the transatlantic slave trade. One major aspect that differs the transatlantic slave trade from the Arab slave trade was the widespread castration of the of the black men, right? The black men were turned into eunuchs. So it's hard to really start a family. It's really hard to out, get out here and reproduce and get it in when you are a eunuch walking around just, you know, ineffective. But when you look at the transatlantic slave trade with the Europeans, you would see that incidents of castration only really happen during recreational episodes of torture like you know when you when you beating the slave when you you know just when you're torturing when you're torturing uh the imprisoned subject that is when castration occurred but in the arab slave trade it just occurred it was just widespread just widespread just common practice we just castrating we just castrating shit so uh yeah yeah it was very barbaric very primitive very archaic and that is one of the main reasons why you don't see a widespread population in the Arab world compared to the Western world. Now let's continue. And the reason why they did that is because eunuchs typically worked amongst the, you know, the wealthy and the elite. So the wealthy and the elite, they didn't want, you know, they didn't want another man just walking around, you know, just ready to get it in. So, you know, you have to chop your balls off to ensure that you're not out here touching the women in the harem. You're not out here touching up, you know, getting in with the women. So unfortunately, that's what it was. And like I said, it's an open discussion. If you disagree, you can get us to the comment section and you can lay down your points on why you think that is actually the European supremacist is actually more guilty or has more blood on his hands than the Arab supremacist. Right now, listen, I gave you numbers. I gave you time frames. I gave you I gave you I just laid it out plain and simple. Right. Knockout punch in the first round. Never been an Arab abolitionist in the history of humanity. Not one. Not one. The Europeans were only engaged in slavery for a few centuries and they done popped out multiple abolitionists from damn near every single country. Bro, they ain't produced a single Arab abolitionist. Not not one in them the 1500 years. Not one, bro. Listen, I already won. I already won the game, but I'm open to hearing the opposite end. Anyway, it's your boy Never Card. That's a lane back in the building. Yes, indeed. Cash up up on the screen, and I'm gone. Peace. Damn, yo, I almost got out of here without actually driving the main point home. Now, with the whole Israel Palestine conflict, right? Everybody talking about Israel supported South Africa. Israel supported apartheid South Africa, right? Israel is a settler colony blah 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 what is a settler colony a settler colony is when essentially foreigners in invaders they establish a permanent residence in a new location and begin to displace the indigenous people and just like i said in the video the other day you cannot talk about apartheid south africa the european invaders that came to south africa if you're not going to talk about the arab invaders that came to north africa if you're not going to talk about the arab conquest of north africa then what the hell are you even talking about and it's funny because it was around the same time that the Arab slave trade popped off. That was when the Arab invaders was coming in and just smoking shit, right? Because it was around the 7th century AD that the Arab conquest began. It was around the 7th century AD they ran up in Egypt. And then all through the 7th century, all through the 8th century, they went from Egypt, they went westward along the North African coast to Libya, Tunisia, Algeria, Morocco, all through there. And it was get down or lay down. You better convert to Islam or nigga be chopping off your head. And pretty much by the end of the 7th century, around the 8th century, I believe, you can pretty much say that ever since then, North Africa has been firmly under Arab control. North Africa, not just one country like in South Africa. Y'all be talking about South Africa, not just one country. Nah, I named you a bunch of countries. Ran up in Egypt, went all through the North African coast taking shit 
and y'all never y'all talking about the settler colony the settler colony but for whatever reason black folks they they they, they never want to bring the same smoke to the a rap y'all got all the energy for the european the european the white man the white man the white man the white man man the white man didn't even steal this much land from you bro god damn and eventually the white man left the a rap said bro i ain't never leaving this my shit and i ain't never leaving and like i said before our people are still in those countries, still fighting for their civil rights, still to this day. But anyways, man, it's your boy Never Carter Celine back in the building. Yes, indeed. Cash up on the screen, and I'm gone. Peace. Reincarnated, I'm back in the original fashion. I left on a horse and came back in that ass, and I left with abundance and came back to famine. We used to be pyramids, now we be rapping. Look how the mighty have fallen. Used to be running, now we be walking. When you be cooning, that's when they applaud it. Selling your soul, your sons and your daughter. Gotta come up in this shit. They stuck in the mix. Really, my heart would be breaking. That's why I'm stacking that paper and handle my business. Pass it down in generation. Talking about money and power and building a nation. That's a deadly combination. Never be watching the TV, they pushing the genders. Falsifying information. Now they got malice intentions Step in the room and I'm feeling the tension Enemy watching me blocking my vision Get for the check cause I need my redemption Building my kingdom, I need to protect it Ready for war like a young Monte Congo Never decided the team is the motto Up in the crib and I'm whipping up waffles Up in the crib and I'm smoking gelato I'm chilling, I'm taking my pain and make it ambition I'm blessed by the gods, but I ain't religious I came for the power, they came for the bitch They making no hourly wage, I got business This shit is an art, and they can never be taught Selling my soul, I can never be bought Play all my money, I see you in court Run to the check and I do it for sport Babylon falling, I go to the source Packing my luggage and go overseas Shorty be with me and she so elite Shorty be chugged and I'm calling her Hershey Secret intelligence probably gon' murk me Don't fuck with brands cause nigga I'm Haitian Say the wrong shit and you're smacking their faces